Nancy. Hello, Nancy. Got a few of you waiting in the uh, chat here. Let's wait for a few more of you to join. Hello. Good morning. Well, good morning to some of you. <laughs> it's actually nighttime here. Hello, hello. Welcome to those of you uh, joining the live stream here. Somebody's asking if I was... Uh, where I was the earthquake, I'm assuming. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. Just waiting for a few of you to jump in here. Currently uh, in my hotel room. Just finished editing a video, which I'll have up shortly. <clears throat> got Nancy Robbins Journey, first time live. Welcome. Yeah, I've been trying to do a few more of these live streams when the... Uh, the moment arises. I am so tired. <laughs> and there is a uh, there is a reason for that. We'll get to that in a second. <clears throat> I do apologize if you guys hear a humming. It's because my computer is literally right next to this camera right now. Yes, an earthquake. Yep, there was an earthquake here in uh, in Asia. We'll uh, get to get to that in a moment. <clears throat> Staring at the screen editing, that explains the look. Yeah, I have literally to the right of the camera, I have uh, <laughs> my laptop here. It is rendering. I've got a uh, video that it will be out shortly. And it's pretty freaking awesome, too. Al Tri uh, Triano says, funny, not in the news. That's weird. A lot of people I know um, got the news. So there was an earthquake um, in Taiwan, which is not far from here. Um, and it is somewhere that I am going in 11 days, I think. I don't even know what the date is today. <laughs> April 4th here. Back home, it is April 3rd. Uh, it's currently... 10.45 here in Tokyo. Um, but yeah, a couple of days ago. Um, was it yes? No, it wasn't even a couple. It was literally yesterday. So yesterday morning here um, in Tokyo, I got the news that there was a massive 7.7 .7 magnitude earthquake in Taipei, Taiwan. Well, not Taipei. Eastern Taiwan. Um... I think I was standing at this, I was in Shinjuku, if you guys are familiar with uh, Tokyo's geography over here. I was in Shinjuku, waiting for the expressway bus. Uh, I was heading to the forest, actually. I did the haunted forest. We'll get to that in a second. Um, but yeah, I heard there was a massive earthquake. I was seeing pictures of literal toppled buildings, like buildings that were leaning like this, which is crazy. Um, so normally in the East Coast, Taiwan, it is very common to have earthquakes. Um, Taipei was affected and a lot of people know that I am going there on the 15th of April, uh, which would be the 14th back home. I'm meeting up with Steve Ronan. Uh, we've got pretty much our, all our plans. I think he's going to be there for like five days. I'll probably be there for like 10 days or something like that. Nine, 10 days. Then I'll probably go somewhere else. Um, over the next probably month and a half, I'm kind of aiming to do like a whole bunch of different places. So yeah, I'm not confirmed yet where I'm going after that, but I, everything here is fine. 
um, it was kind of crazy hearing the news because, um, so the earthquake happened, then there was tsunami warnings in Taiwan, uh, but there were also tsunami warnings in, um, in south, southern Japan. Um, didn't affect us here at all in Tokyo, like we didn't even feel it. But I was talking to Steve, and he's like, yo, I literally felt the earthquake, which is surprising because Steve likes his sleep. <laughs> so the fact that he was even up in the morning, unless it woke him up, I have no idea. Um, he didn't go into too much detail, but he's in China right now. He's been there for quite some time. Um, but yeah, he was like, dude, I literally felt the, the earth shake, which is crazy because like across the water, essentially, is where he felt it from. Um, but yeah, everything over here is fine. Um, no issues whatsoever. Just uh, having a blast in, in Japan. Um, I'm really freaking tired because last night we ended up going to, well, I, I don't even know why I said we, there was no plural. It was literally just me and the deer. Um, we went to the haunted Japanese forest. Um, you guys probably know which one that is. Basically... Um, let me read some of the chat here before I go into details. How big was the earthquake, Paul is asking. Um, so from what I heard, it was reported to be 7.5 to 7.7 .7 magnitude, which is, uh, pretty significant. There was a lot of damage, um, from what I know, several skyscraper-type buildings in Taipei actually, um basically leaned sort of like collapsed so to say i don't know if they completely collapsed um i think the east coast of taiwan was affected the most so not really taipei so much taipei is the capital so if you're not familiar with the geography um but yeah apparently from what i saw in news reports a couple of hours ago said that there were so far about a thousand reported injuries I don't know exactly how many deaths. Um, at the time when it first happened, like maybe two, three hours later, there was only one reported death. I don't know if that's changed. Um, let me actually look it up just to see, just so we can get the facts here. But yeah, for those of you, if you're hearing like a humming noise, I do have my laptop rendering a video right now. So the fan is kind of going crazy. So I'm gonna have a, a main channel video pretty much after this live stream, but maybe in like an hour or two. I don't I don't know exactly how long it's gonna take to upload, but uh, it is almost done. It's only got six minutes left to go. But uh, yeah, let's see. Let's search up the Taiwan. Okay, so the Taiwan earthquake death toll rises to ten as islands infrastructure tested um so it's not like a huge number there's a lot of injured over a thousand so far um 10 is still devastating um so prayers go out to the people who lost their lives those who are currently missing maybe under debris just pretty crazy to think about um like just imagine that i was there matt i'm trying i'm trying to imagine because i am going there within the next uh, 10, 11 days. I'm trying to imagine being in one of the buildings, either shaking or whatever. I saw videos of uh, people filming, like they literally stopped on a bridge and they could see the river, like the water just kind of going like this. Like I'm, I'm trying to place myself in that um, position. Uh, Washington Post reported 9 killed and 963 injured in Taiwan after 7.4 magnitude quake 20 hours ago, is when the report came out. Um, Taiwan earthquake search for survivors continue into night after 9 people killed 21 hours ago, reported by The Guardian. So it was a pretty significant thing. There were tsunami warnings um, here as well in Japan, but uh, everything is a-okay. -okay no issues here how long am i in japan i am going to be here for approximately 10 11 more days roughly um we'll say 10 days because today's pretty much over um and i am flying out on the 15th and it's already the 14th um so basically 10 more days um after this i am heading out to i'm, I'm in tokyo right now um just kind of hanging out for the next few days i was gonna do fukushima 
um, tomorrow, but I am literally exhausted. My feet hurt so bad <laughs> that it's hard to walk right now. Um, what is my hotel like? I'll, I'll show you guys that in a second, but my feet hurt really, really bad because I've been doing a lot of hiking, um, as you guys can see with all the videos that I've been dropping. Um, yeah, so it's been, it, it's taken a toll on me and I am very underslept. I'm exhausted. I probably look like crap right now. My mom even said earlier, she's like, don't go live. You, you're probably going to look like crap. I'm like, honestly, I don't care. Whatever. It is what it is. I'm showing you guys, I'm showing you guys the grind behind the scenes, right? Like people don't understand how much effort goes into, um, making this content but it is what it is I'm, I'm really i'm thoroughly enjoying myself i'm doing something a little bit different here with a lot of like travel content mixed in with what we normally do haunted and abandoned stuff like that um which i am gonna have a main channel after this um you look great i bet yeah my hair is a uh, hair is a disaster it's already growing in my hair grows so fast it, it's kind of annoying it's uh it's a blessing, but a curse at the same time, because I go to the barber so often, but um, unless I can manage to get to the barber every two weeks, my hair starts to kind of grow kind of crazy. It just, uh, it's it's nuts. But uh, yeah, so basically, my mind is literally all over the place because I have so many things going on and all these plans coming up, and uh, I'm just trying to remember everything. So for th first things first, Last night, we went to the uh, Haunted Japanese Forest. Crazy. Absolutely insane experience. So, basically what I had to do, um, because it is a, about a three and a half hour uh, trip to get there. I had to take the subway from where I am to Shinjuku Station, um, which is like one of the major stations here in Tokyo. Um, from there, I had to take an expressway bus to, I don't even remember the name of the city. And I got there, and, uh, I'm, I, t there's, there's basically where the entrance is, there's something known as the Wind Cave. So, I go up to the lady who was at the, um, ticket sales station area, um, and I'm like, yeah, I need to get to the Wind Cave. She's like, no Wind Cave today. And then she just kind of like walks away. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I'm like, uh, okay, well, if that's the case, I'm just going to take a taxi. So I ended up paying some taxi cab driver, like 60 bucks Canadian or something like that. Dropped me right off at the wind cave. Um, yeah, so from there, I and it was raining like crazy. Not so bad when I first got there, but I entered the forest and uh it was raining so i kind of like i had a poncho put that on kind of irritating i don't like wearing those things but kind of had to just because there was so much water <laughs> um but yeah so we're in the forest and uh the rain is steadily increasing 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 um at some point obviously the sun went down um the sun goes down really early here like 6 30 or something like that and from what I hear it doesn't really change much throughout the year like back home depending on where you are um, when it's like summertime the um, the Sun will go down like if you're in northern Ontario apparently the Sun goes down at like 11 p.m. which is kind of crazy but not here it's like 6 6 30 7 maybe the latest so by 7 p.m. it's pitch black it's pouring rain in the middle of the forest I'm freaking out because, like, things are moving around and there's nothing that I can visibly see. Um, like, this was honestly probably the craziest video I have ever recorded. Like, no joke. Um, so anyways, we ended up leaving. I ended up leaving. And I'm like, dude, what the hell am I going to do? It is pouring rain. It's not supposed to stop raining until 2 o'clock in the morning at this point. So I come back out and everything's closed like there's a couple of like caves like touristy spots that people can come to they close at 5 p.m. it's maybe 7 7 30 at this point um the only thing that I see is a bathroom <laughs> like there's the men's and the, the, the women's so I'm in the I, I walk into the men's because the light was on the door was wide open so I'm like all right whatever 
I put all my stuff, everything's like drenched at this point. Um, very uncomfortable feeling. And I'm just gonna set my video to upload here because I can hear it. I can hear the fan slowing down, which means the video is done here. Hang on one good, one second, guys. Guys, you're gonna probably hear the music. Okay, looks good. Looks good. Awesome. Um, when they did that, they were getting nice. Yeah, I'm gonna have a main channel video um, going out probably within the next, I'd say like hour or so. Let me just make sure I upload it to the right channel. Almost done. So yeah, anyways, um, basically. I spent from 7 p.m. till about 2.30 in the morning in this bathroom. So I kind of planned for this. The problem is, is that when you go to that particular area, it's near Mount Fuji. So it's kind of touristy in some spots. There is like some main uh, train stations, whatever, whatever. Um, the only problem is that everything, the public transport stops running uh, at like certain times. So over there, to be specific, the trains, I think, stop, the trains, buses, everything stops running at about seven. So I knew that basically there's no coming back to Tokyo. I'm staying, my hotel is in Tokyo. There's no coming back. So I had already anticipated I'm going to be there all night long, which is fine. Um, the only problem was that it kept raining forever. Like it just was not stopping. <laughs> just so annoying so it was like hard to film I think I filmed like the first 35 minutes whatever from daylight transitioning into nighttime and uh, you guys are all going to see this in the, the main channel video it's it's crazy um, then from like 7 30 8 p.m whatever it was until 2 30 I was in first I was in the men's washroom now what's funny about the men's washroom some areas, like in parks and stuff like that here in Japan, they don't have normal toilets. They have like, it's like a hole in the ground. So you literally have to squat to do a number two. Like, I'm not even joking. Like, it's it's super old school. Um, so, yeah. Then, I wasn't sure if the women's was open. So then I kind of like walked over. I noticed the women's washroom was open. So I kind of walked in. I mean, there was nobody around. I don't, I didn't think anybody was going to come at that time. And no one did the entire night. So I literally hung out in the women's washroom because I realized it was open. Um, it was annoying because the lights were motion sensor or whatever. But yeah, I basically put all my stuff out to kind of dry in the women's bathroom. And at least they had normal toilets that I can kind of sit on. So I literally hung out until about 2.30 a.m. before the rain finally slowed down enough that I was able to go back into the forest. And then from about 2.30 till about 4.30, lots of noise from the neighbor. Um, but from about 2.30 to 4.30, I basically uh, was roaming around the forest here. It is called the Aokigara, Aokigara uh, Forest here in Japan. It's super haunted, and it's freaking crazy. I saw some stuff that I have never seen before with my own eyes. And I don't want to spoil it. There's a lot of stuff that you guys are going to see in the video. And it's intense. Um, now, a lot of you guys might know that a lot of people go into the forest for a particular reason. If you know what I'm talking about. I don't want to go into too much detail. Um, but a lot of people go and kind of hide out so to say, basically disappear in the forest because it's so dense. If anybody goes into this forest, you will probably never be found. And you can get lost. It's very dense. It's treacherous. It's very, very hard to hike. Um, the crazy thing is, let's just say we, we found some stuff, um, if you know what I'm talking about. At that point, things got crazy. Um, you're going to see all this on camera. It's, it was nuts. It was such a crazy experience. Um, very overwhelming, but, um, yeah. 
So that was a little bit about uh, a little bit into my experience at the forest here in Japan. Um, like I said, probably a crazy. It's probably going to be two parts because uh, it looks like there's probably about two hours worth of footage. So I think it makes sense to probably do it in, do it in two different videos. Um, but yeah, what else is there? So we did that. Um, oh, after that. So I basically come out of the forest. The first bus runs at 7.15 in the morning. So imagine I got there at about 5 p.m., 5, 5.30, the, the day before p.m. Um, picked up, picked the first bus out of there at about 7.15 or 7.20, something like that. Got to the station. Um, of course, the first expressway bus was completely sold out, so I had to wait an extra hour. But at this point, I was, like, on no sleep whatsoever. But like I said, I had planned for this. So I bought a whole bunch of food and snacks and stuff at the uh, the convenience store over here. And uh, a bunch of, like, bottles of coffee, water. Had everything. I was, like, totally prepared. I literally had two backpacks. <laughs> which was so annoying because it's so hard to carry two backpacks at the same time. Um... Did you use navigation in the forest to help, or is there no signal to help? So there is signal, but it comes in and out. Um, it's kind of annoying, but it does work well enough, but you realistically don't need signal. Um, so what you do, now I don't recommend this. If you guys ever go there, please do not veer off the trail. There are hiking trails that you can take. Um try not to veer I know people want to explore the forest but it is the most dense forest in the world like I flew my drone this morning you can't see you cannot see through the tops of the trees it's just like you're flying your drone you're looking down and it's just for like they call it a sea of forest and when they say that it's it's not a joke you cannot see anything. You cannot see the trails. You cannot see other people. You cannot see the dirt beneath the trails, uh, beneath the trees. Sorry, it's uh, it's intense. Um, so I veered off a little bit. Um, I don't even know why. There was this one section that I heard something, and something told me go in in there, um, which I was kind of planning on doing because I wanted to show you guys like what it's like to go further into the depth of this forest so i ended up going in there and uh yeah we let, let's just say i don't want to spoil it so let's just say we did we we saw some stuff um i heard something that i've never experienced before i don't even know yet i haven't even um, taking the SD card out of the camera yet because everything was soaking wet so I'm trying to like wait until everything dries before I pull the SD cards out of the camera because I don't want to lose the footage um, but yeah dude I've never had an experience like this it was it was crazy um, yeah so this morning ended up catching the expressway bus from the station about nine o'clock in the morning um, I think it took about an hour and a half two hours whatever to finally get to Shinjuku and then took another subway, um, then basically came back to the hotel and got here at 12.30. So I had been up for well over 24 hours, 26 hours. Um, it was a lot. It, it was, it was, I'm physically like overwhelmed. So my plan was to kind of do, I'm kind of glad that I ended up doing it this way because I was thinking of doing Fukushima first. The only problem here is that with Fukushima from Tokyo, you can take a train there and visitors are allowed in there. I wanted to go. I want to document it. Um, the only problem is when I do get there, I'd have to be on foot. Um, so I wanted to kind of like my idea was to go and explore Fukushima, see what it's like now, um, because a lot of it's changing. It's been about 14 years. If you're not familiar, there was an earthquake back in 2010 which caused a tsunami, um, which ended up hitting the, um, yeah, apparently there's like a bunch of losers in here. Yes, you do need mod, Angelo, you have a lot of disrespectful people. Canadians are the politest people ever, Canadian. We're pretty polite. 
Mary says, what? You were in the haunted forest? Yes, I went to the haunted forest last night. I actually went by myself because uh, I am alone. There's no one here with me. Uh, let's see here. Hang on a second. Melissa. Let's see. Melissa, do you want to be? Okay, I'm going to make you a mod, Melissa. Add as moderator. Standard. Okay, we got one there. Mary Johnson's asking, all right, let me add a couple mods because I'm going to let you guys deal with this. <laughs> uh, Charisse, I'm picking a couple people that I'm familiar with. I see you guys in the, the chat quite often. But uh, yeah, it was basically, it was a, an entire 26 hour trip excursion to the forest um and yeah it was uh <clears throat> mary johnson i mod for many channels awesome perfect good to know all right well there's about three of you guys now that are mods because there was a couple people i was seeing i don't know um do stuff say stuff whatever i don't even care um <laughs> But yeah, so basically, the plan was to go to Fukushima. The only issue is that once I get there, there's I don't have a car. So everything I would have to do would have to be on foot. And um, yes, people, please be re respectful in the chat. Um, but yeah, so I'd have to do everything on foot. Only other thing is I don't even know like what there is to film there still like abandoned wise and i don't even really have to do the abandoned stuff like it doesn't really matter i'd really just want to document what's there so anyways i switched up my schedule because i wasn't sure what i was going to do i was talking to a whole bunch of people i was talking to steve ronan uh exploring with josh a bunch of guys who have been there over the last few years to fukushima to document the abandoned stuff there um apparently it's pretty risky so josh was warning me he's like dude honestly like it's not it's cool but it's not worth it um a lot of people have been getting caught there they got arrested whatever whatever so i'm like all right well maybe we'll just avoid going in the abandoned buildings it's probably for the best um i'll just take a train there bus the only issue is i'd have to leave here at like six o'clock in the morning which i was planning on doing tomorrow but now after doing the forest i'm just like exhausted you can probably tell from the way i look <laughs> i didn't really get much sleep i came back to the hotel got here like 12 30 or something like that i think i slept till like five um and then i basically woke up got ready needed to shower because i felt disgusting i mean i was stuck out there last night in the rain my feet were all soaked uh shoes were all soaked my gloves were drenched um, I was fortunate enough that there was a bathroom there. So what I kept doing, this was really funny. So I had my gloves. They were completely soaked, um, because they're like that cloth material. So what I kept doing was I was, uh, in the bath, in the ladies' bathroom. Um, keep in mind, no one was there. So obviously that was the only reason that I was in there. Um, and there was a hand dryer. So I kept taking my gloves and just like popping them in and out of the, the dryer. And then I figured out like a way that I could stick them in there that it would just like run for like a minute and a half on its own. I had to do it literally like 50 different times <laughs> just to finally get the water out of my gloves. It was ridiculous. But um, yeah, that was my whole experience. I, I'm not going to do Fukushima right now. And the uh, reason why is because I'm so tired. My feet are aching from all of the hiking and everything that I've been doing over the past... Um, how long have I even been here? It is April 4th. I got here on the 27th of March. So it's been about a week. Um, I've done a lot. I've probably hiked 20 miles, 25, 30 miles. I don't know. Is that a lot? <laughs> there was one day I hiked over eight miles from one end of Tokyo to the, well, not even one end to the other, but like from one uh, prefecture of Tokyo to the other. Um, so that was pretty crazy, but it's, it's kind of catching up with me. And I'm like, you know what? Let me just chill out, catch up, get all the videos ready for you guys. Um, and then I'm going to the more west of here. I'm heading to Osaka. I'm going to probably go to Kyoto, Nara, 
um, we'll see where we end up and uh, film a bunch of cool stuff out there too it's gonna be a lot of fun uh, you've done a lot of trekking yes I certainly have and then last night I was trekking through the forest too which is it's treacherous out there man it's it's hard to hike like if you veer off the trail you're really not supposed to um, there's a lot of warnings you can get lost um, the one thing that I did do was I brought, uh, where is it? I brought literally ribbon. So I brought rib three rolls of ribbon. And the reason why I brought it with me from Canada was because the first time I came here to Japan, I was planning on doing the forest. Um, the only problem was I couldn't find ribbon. For some odd reason, they just don't sell it here. I don't know why. Um, I'm sure they sell it somewhere, but it was like the places I kept going to and I was running out of time that day to find it. There was nowhere that was I would that I went to that was actually selling ribbon. And the reason why you buy it is because you tie it around the trees and create markers for yourself. So when you go in, you can follow the markers coming back out because you will get lost. Like it's it's discombobulating, we'll say, <laughs> when you go into the forest. <sighs> But, uh, yeah, so we're out here in Japan. There's, uh, having a blast out here. Just finished, uh, editing another video. Looks like there's about 33 minutes left to finish uploading. I still gotta do my thumbnail, um, but we'll have that up probably in about an hour and a half to two hours, it looks like. So, get a compass. I didn't really need a compass. I was lucky that my phone kind of worked, um, because I figured out, I figured that my phone worked. Uh, reason why is because we'll just say we found something in the forest, and I needed the coordinates um, just so that way I can notify park rangers as to what we found. Um, but yeah, so basically, um, the next week and a half. Like I said, I'm not doing Fukushima anymore. I don't. I just don't think there's a point in doing it tomorrow because I'm like I'm just exhausted. And if I don't have the energy to do something like that, it's gonna take a lot of hiking because basically, uh, what I'd have to do is I'd have to take a train uh, about three and a half, four hours north of Tokyo to Futaba, uh, which is part of the Fukushima prefecture. Um, not far from where the actual uh, Daiichi nuclear power plant was, which was where the meltdowns occurred back in 2010. And um, to be honest, to take a train out there for four hours, which is already exhausting enough, at six o'clock in the morning, and then I'd, I'd be limited time-wise to about five, six hours tops, of hiking, walking around, and trying to film as much as I can when I'm already exhausted and my feet and legs already don't want to function to begin with because I've just overdone it for the past like week, week and a half. Um, it just doesn't make sense because I feel like I'm not going to get the best content that I want to get. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to be out here probably in Asia for like the next month and a half or so, maybe a little longer. I don't really know. Um, but basically, I think at some point I'm probably going to fly back into Japan, spend another couple weeks here and plan it out a little bit better. So that way I can actually hit that location um, and then probably a few other ones that would be would it would need a little bit more careful planning. Um, to be honest, I didn't plan shit for this trip um i just kind of showed up uh i had the first four nights booked at a hotel and that was about it everything else was kind of just winging it um everything's working out so no issues there but yeah for those of you who have joined late um just to explain again there was a 7.5 i don't know some places have reported 7.4 some have reported 7.5 7.7 .7 magnitude earthquake in Taiwan which is not far from here it's about a two and a half hour flight roughly um everything here is good so we have no issues but I know a lot of you guys were kind of concerned as to uh what had happened um there was no 
no effect at all here in Tokyo. So we didn't feel anything. <laughs> now, Taipei, Taipei, Taiwan is actually an hour behind as well. So I might have just been asleep when the whole thing happened. But from what I know, nobody really had anything happen over here. But yeah, everything is good here. I am safe. I have marked myself safe from earthquake. Is that still a thing on Facebook? Do do people still like mark themselves safe? I don't I don't really know. I don't use Facebook very often. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the funny thing is we're going there in uh 11 days. So, I got a lot of stuff I want to go and see out here. Um yeah, it's going to be fun, though. I'm going to probably go to Kyoto. From what I'm hearing, Kyoto is crazy right now. Um, oh, the cool thing is the cherry blossoms are blooming. So we're going to go and get some footage and photos and stuff of the cherry blossoms. Uh, it's going to be amazing, spectacular. Um, but yeah, we're going to be going to some really, really cool areas very soon over the next uh, few days. Basically just chilling until the 8th. Yeah, I'm leaving on the 8th. So we got about three days left here in Tokyo. I'm heading west towards Osaka. We're going to be spending a whole bunch of time out there. Nara, uh, Kyoto, Osaka. Um, and then basically I'm flying out from there to Taipei, Taiwan. Mm. Do you talk to people on Zang... What is that? Z uh, Zongi? Zangi? I no, I don't even know what that is. So if somebody is claiming to be me and they're talking to you on there, it's clearly not me because I don't even know what that is. <clears throat> Please be careful by yourself. I'm good. Over here in uh, Japan, Japan is very safe. It's um, I would consider it probably one of the safest uh, places in the world. Like I haven't seen anything crazy happen here. Zanti, I think, is a Japan Facebook. Well, honestly, I have no idea. I know there's like a couple different apps here, um, but personally, I just don't. I don't use them. I know there's something called WeChat, which I think is Chinese, but personally, I don't feel like giving all my uh, private information to China. So, um, Japan has earthquake safe buildings. Yeah, they have. They have earthquake safe buildings. Um, the only questionable thing is when there's tsunamis, right? So, uh, Justin does ASMR. Thank you for the, uh, super chat. Hi, Angelo, big fan, brother. Hope to see you with Josh or Steve soon. I am actually meeting Steve, uh, Ronan in 11 days in Taipei. We're not going to have too much time together there just because he's, he's got some important things to take care of, but... We'll be together for about, uh, I think, five days. Uh, so we're going to film a bunch of spots, as many as we possibly can. Uh, since 2015, during the Exploring Crew days, Josh, Steve, John, and Cody. Love your videos, man. Thank you. Appreciate the, uh, the super chat. Yeah, I remember those days, man. That was um, one of the things that kind of motivated me to uh, kind of get started. Um now I've kind of like evolved, uh, like I don't just do abandoned spots per se. I try to do, uh, a lot of different things. I've, I've really, really been motivated to do a lot of like the travel type of content. So we're going to be doing like a lot of extreme travel. Um, I'm actually, so after Taiwan, I'm kind of debating what I want to do. So I was looking at, uh, Phuket thailand which looks freaking amazing google it and you'll see some like amazing uh pictures of beautiful beaches uh apparently it's like some of the best beaches and stuff in the world um so i might do that what i'm i want to do like i want to do so much that's the freaking problem with traveling because you want to do like a little bit of everything uh, Enzo says, have you ever done a video with Exploring with Josh? Uh, no, um, I have not. We do talk, but I haven't, uh, had the opportunity to film a video 
together with Josh. Um, but yeah, anyways, so the problem with traveling is like you have all these, especially here, you have so many different options because there's like countries literally everywhere all over the map and you're just trying to debate because you're like, ah, I'm trying to squeeze everything into like two, two and a half months. Um, but like when I go to these places, I don't want to go for like two days. I want to go for like two weeks at least. Right. And even that's not enough. Like if you come to Japan for two weeks, after the two weeks, you're like, wow, you're like mind blown how beautiful it is here and how amazing it is. But then you start to realize two weeks is not enough. Um, so I'm trying to like debate exactly like which spots I'm going to do in which order. Um, so, so far we know we're here in Japan already to begin with. I'm going to go to Taiwan. Um, and then after Taiwan, it's up for debate. I could end up in the Philippines. I could end up in Singapore. I could end up in Thailand. Um, and I'm kind of thinking now that I might end up doing Singapore and then maybe Thailand and then maybe somewhere else after that. Reason why is because all the stopovers are in Singapore anyways. So if I'm going to take a flight, I might as well go to Singapore, stay there for like, I don't know, four or five days, whatever it is, hang out, check out some cool stuff. Um, and then from there go to Thailand. Cause it's like, why do I have to do, why should I do like a 19 hour flight? With like a, I don't know, 15 hour layover or something. When I might as well just spend four or five days in a country anyways. And then go on to the next one. So, we'll see. Don't go to Singapore. Why? <laughs> Be careful in Singapore. I will. Japan is a beautiful country. It certainly is. It's uh, it's one of the nicest places I've ever seen. That's for sure. Um, so over the next like week and a half, I'm going to end up going to a lot of like the historic locations out here. And uh, there's one haunted one that I have in mind as well. So I'm going to definitely do that. Provided I can get to it without any issues. That's been the one problem is that it's the travel time in between because I don't have a car here. So like traveling between certain places. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, uh, it's complicated because I have to take transit everywhere. So bringing all my equipment, my stuff, my freaking shoulders hurt from carrying everything. And <laughs> but uh, it's been fun so far. Looking forward to the videos, lovely country. Yeah, so I'm going to be going to the historic areas uh, west of Tokyo. Uh, basically everything surrounding Osaka. Um, a lot of the spots that I've done four years ago, but I want to do them again um, and see what I missed. Um, but from what I'm hearing, especially with it being cherry blossom season, it's crazy busy. So prepare to see a lot of craziness, a lot of foreigners, a lot of tourists, uh, visiting a lot of like the castles, uh, temples, stuff like that. Um, but today I've been noticing in Tokyo, there's a lot of cherry blossoms that are blooming. So it's looking very nice. Oh, that was weird. Somehow the stream literally disconnected. I don't know how, but you know, the Wi-Fi is weird here in the hotel. But yeah, I am in my uh, hotel room. So for those of you who haven't seen a Japanese hotel room, it's this <laughs> like there's there's literally not much i have all my clothes like the door is literally right there if there's a bathroom back there it's they're very small very very small um so far i think the biggest biggest room hotel room that i've had uh was in atami which was in the resort city um I guess because they have a little bit more space. Here in Tokyo, everything's so close to each other, right? <clears throat> but yeah, I feel like I'm in a, a shoebox right now. I have stuff everywhere. Um, I'm trying to get myself organized. I had to take everything out of my bags after last night because everything was soaked. Um, everything seems to be in working order, thankfully. That would suck if something important broke. 
Uh, you seem don't like Malaysia. Never said I don't like Malaysia. I'd love to go there. I just, there's so many, the problem is there's so many places. Like, how many countries does Asia have? Like, 40, 50? Um, so for me to do them all in a matter of two and a half months, it's just impossible. So I'll have to do, I'll have to be selective, just like off the top of my mind. Uh, reason why Thailand is an, is an option is because... Uh, my dad has a good friend who lives in Phuket, so he could actually kind of like show me around the area, um, show me what's cool around there to document, stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I don't I don't know yet. I haven't decided like what I'm doing. I thought about Malaysia. I'm like, oh, that would be an interesting place to go and visit too. But I'm also kind of like, the reason why I, I, I'm thinking Thailand soon is because I kind of need like a little bit of a semi break kind of in between um and Thailand is just the go-to place to do something like that like it's beautiful it's an absolutely beautiful place um beautiful beaches I'm sure Malaysia and other countries probably have cool stuff beautiful places to see too uh what happened to my eye I don't think there's anything wrong with my eye something wrong with my eye <laughs> It's probably just the way I'm squinting because the light, I'm so tired. Um, I'm on very little sleep right now. Did the haunted forest here in Japan last night. So I'm going to have a crazy, crazy video series on that. Amy says, got to go to work. See you later. Have fun at work. You can see out of them now. I can. They function. <laughs> yeah, I got LASIK done uh, a couple months ago now. They're still healing, like they get a little bit dry, especially in like certain areas. So if like I'm on the subway or airplane or something like that, they get super dry. Right now they're a little bit dry because I'm not, I'm just underslept. I'm so tired. Um, uh, Bulma says, how are the travels? They are really good. Your right eye. Nothing wrong with my right eye. Oh, I just I'm tired. Oh. <laughs> I'm ready for bed at this point, but my video is uploading. I'm gonna have a main channel video for you guys very very soon. Um, like literally within probably the next hour or two. So once I finish this, then I'll be able to get the thumbnail ready and all that fun stuff. All the extra side stuff that you guys don't see. <laughs> the behind the scenes. Yeah, I went to a really cool place called uh, Atami here a little while ago. Um, super fun. Really, really cool city. And the great thing is, like, there's not a lot of tourists, um, especially here right now in, in March, because it's cherry blossom season. There's so many freaking tourists in here, here in Tokyo, um, all the other spots, too. But I'll probably come back for like another com a couple weeks before uh, before I go back home. Uh, when you get back to North America, will you collab with Jazz? Yeah, of course. Um, should be fun. My what? Somebody asked if I was gay or bisexual. Okay. <laughs> Somebody said he's gay, not bisexual. I'm actually straight. Um, neither. Um, I had LASIK. Uh, oh, shoot. Friggin' chat's moving pretty quick. I had LASIK last May. Uh, best decision. Use lubricated drops throughout the day and you'll be all good. Whoops. Shoot. I don't know if I just... I'm sorry if I just blocked somebody. <laughs> I clicked something. I don't know what happened. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Um, yeah, I try to use eye drops. It, the funny thing is, like, depending on where you go. So when I was in the Dominican, I barely had to use eye drops. Um, my eyes. It depends on like the humidity because, like, the more humidity, the more, the more moisture, which is really good for your eyes. 
um, over there I had no issues whatsoever because it was so humid. Um, Oh my god, these people. Jameson. He's 100% gay. Look how he talks. Yeah, sure. Whatever. Whatever you want to believe. Like, I, I literally don't care. I can assure you that I am straight, but... Um, what else? What else? Uh, nature sites you want to see. Um, yeah, actually. So we're thinking... So my friend Andrew lives here. Um, he's been living here for a few years. Uh, he was the original reason why we came here four years ago. Um... So, basically, he was, we're getting together, him, a couple of his friends, uh, co-workers, we're gonna be getting together, uh, Friday, I think, and just kind of hanging out, apparently we're doing, he's thinking of doing, like, a cherry blossom viewing party, which is kind of funny, um, oh my god, okay, like, there's a bunch of people in this chat right now, Damn, your TV is big. Is this big? I know it is actually kind of a big TV. Yeah, you're kind of right. <laughs> There's a bunch of trolls in the chat, and honestly, dude, it's really, really funny. Uh, but yeah, so what, what other? I don't even know. Like, I don't know what the hell else I'm planning on doing, but um, I'm probably going to go and hang out and check out a couple spots tomorrow here in Tokyo. And then from there, uh, I mean, Kyoto, there's, is basically, like, there's an entire area that's considered an ancient city. So, just walking through it. Now, the annoying part is anticipating that there's going to be, like, four billion tourists all walking through the same area. Um, kind of is what it is. I mean, if you come at this time of year when the cherry blossoms are blooming, then, yeah. Are you in Japan? I am. Yes, I'm still in Tokyo. Um, and then after this, I'm heading to Osaka. Uh, and then after that, from Osaka, heading to Taiwan to meet up with Steve Ronan. So that is pretty much that. Your eyes look puffy from lack of sleep, my friend in Japan, for three weeks. Uh, collab with Jazz, Ben and Chris, please. Uh, cast from Australia. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm so tired. Ugh. I was thinking of editing one more video. It's only 11.30 right now, but honestly, I think I'll just relax and then deal with it tomorrow. Um, are you going to the Haunted Forest? Actually, I went last night. Uh, it was crazy. Hence the reason why I'm so tired, because I did not sleep last night. I was up all night at the forest. Um, it rained a lot. I spent a lot of time uh, waiting for the rain to stop in a bathroom, um, but I did what I had to do to get it done, and it's done. I have the footage. It was a crazy, crazy experience, so you guys are going to see that very, very soon. I honestly cannot wait to share it with you guys. Brad's gone? What do you mean by Brad's gone? I know he was having a... Uh, things going on um and he was saying that he might not be making videos anymore he said he was keeping his channel up i don't i don't know i don't know what the hell is going on dude like i'm um, there's so much happening all at one time it's hard to keep up with everybody especially being in uh you know on the opposite side of the earth um I'm just catching up with the, uh, how long till the next vlog? Uh, so I have a, a main channel video. It says it has eight minutes left. It's currently uploading. Then it has to process. Um, oh, Brad in the chat. You guys are talking about. No. Yeah. I don't know. I've been talking to Brad. Uh, I know he's been having some issues. I hope he doesn't like. I guess I kind of spilled the beans. <laughs> I don't know if he's mentioned anything yet, but 
he was telling me he's like I don't know I, he's he's been having some challenges with doing YouTube and stuff. Who is calling me? Why is my good friend likely calling me at this time? Damn it! Like I don't got time for your shit. Yeah, Chizza Chad not posting for a bit because of stuff going on. There's just, like I said, guys, there's um, people out there, they're having issues. Um, life's hard. <laughs> what can I say? Um, it is what it is. Are you going back to the S Forest while in Japan? I already did it last night. Uh, looks like probably a few of you guys are popping in now. But uh, yeah, it's done. I did the forest last night. And, uh, it's, it was crazy. I was up all night and I am exhausted and it is really kicking my ass at this point. <sighs> Have I tried Japanese food? Yes, every day. Sherry says people have been dropping off when making, uh, them dropping off them making videos at least we still have you yeah i'm not uh what the heck just happened that was weird my laptop just did a thing on its own i don't know what happened but yeah you know people on youtube um it's challenging youtube is not easy so i think it's unfortunate and I'll, i'm just going to be quite frank with you guys um Shout out to... What is going on? Stop zooming in and out. <laughs> is this computer like motion sensor or something? I don't know what's going on. Um, but when it comes to YouTube... So first off, I'd like to say uh, thank you for the super chat, Kimberly. Love you, Angelo. You're amazing. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, a lot of people think YouTube's easy. Um, some people get lucky. Some people will tell you they got lucky. Um, other people have not been so lucky. Now I've been in I've been kinda lucky in certain respects. I mean I have you guys, obviously. I'm very, very blessed and lucky to have all of you guys. I mean there's four hundred and thirty-two of you watching on the second channel. That is incredible. Um so I just want to say thank you so much for all of that, because I really, really appreciate it. Um But it's not easy because you're constantly every day every single day you're trying to find figure out what's the next thing that you're going to be working on uh what's the next thing that you're going to be doing trying to kind of adapt uh because you know the algorithm changes sometimes they want to promote you sometimes they don't um and the thing with that too that a lot of people don't understand is that like doing this in particular um is very expensive we got Lin P official from the Philippines. Shout out to the Philippines. Thinking of coming there probably soon, hopefully. We'll see. Um, but yeah, so it's like, it's very expensive, right? I mean, when you're spending 100 bucks, 150 bucks in a hotel every night, flights to $2,000 to get to, you know, from one continent to the other, at the end of the month, you're spending like six to $8,000. Like, that's a lot of money, right? So you got to be able to make that money in order to be able to spend it. Now, while the time is enjoyable, when you're stuck out in a forest for 20 hours or so to film one or two videos, whatever it is, that's a big amount of effort, right? So a lot of people, when they start on YouTube and they have like, you know, small amounts of success, kind of build themselves up a little bit. Um, and then kind of realize how challenging it is maybe to grow or to kind of you know get to a certain place that they would like to be at is not easy um unfortunately some people end up giving up before they even really make it so to say um i don't know i i think a lot of its mindset things like that but um it's it's not easy it takes a lot of work a lot of consistency you're constantly planning, trying to figure out what you're going to be doing next. Um, let's see. Oh, man. I'm sure it's hard to be on YouTube. You did a great job. Thank you. Appreciate it. 
still not done yet. We're still, uh, we're still, we're, we're out here, man. We're growing, changing things up with doing, uh, some different areas, um, a couple different, you know, ideas, things that I'd like to do. I really want to do a lot of the travel stuff combined with like, you know, the haunted and abandoned and whatever the usual stuff that we try and do. Um, but yeah, wow, damn, I've already been on here for like an hour. That's crazy. So I'm going to go and uh, get a thumbnail ready for the next video. Uh, appreciate all of you guys for jumping in. I cannot believe there's over 400 of you who joined us today. The time here is, uh, I'm well ahead from home. Um, so it is currently 11.42 p.m. So I gotta get that all done so I can hit the hay and get some sleep because I'm just tired from doing the Haunted Forest last night, which we are gonna have a video, not right away. Um, I still haven't even pulled the footage off the SD cards. Um, but we'll get to that shortly. <laughs> Christina Moon. Damn, I missed the whole thing. I'll leave the, uh, stream up, uh, for the replay so you guys can see it. What the heck, Melissa? Holy crap, Super Chat. Thank you so much. Thank you for making me a mod. I know it's expensive to travel to Syria. Oh my god. You didn't have to do that, Melissa. Oh, but thank you. I'm gonna... I'm going to hurt it. I <laughs> really appreciate it, though. Holy crap. Um, wow. You're welcome. I mean, thank you for modding. I mean, like, you're helping me out. Like, I'm trying to, you know, just talk on here. And it's uh, you guys are very helpful. <laughs> but, yeah, like I said, we'll have a main channel video. It uh, just completed the upload, so it's processing now. So we'll have that up probably within the hour, it looks like. I don't even know what time it is back home. Uh, let's see, actually, hang on. What time is it in Toronto? 10.43 a.m. back home. Wow. But yeah, thank you to all of you who uh, joined us today. Um, Sharon says, 13 hours behind you. Yeah, I'm ahead and uh, I'm in the future. <laughs> For most of you guys. Some of you guys are out here in Asia too. So you're pretty much like on the same, almost the same time frame that I'm at, that I'm on. But yeah, man, there's, uh, is your earthquake video out today? I didn't do an earthquake video. There was no, like, nothing happened here. So I guess some of you guys are just joining us. But, um, yeah, here in Tokyo, nothing happened. Uh, the earthquake mainly was in Taiwan, mostly in the east coast of Taiwan. Um, drink plenty of water to help with jet lag. I'm not even jet lagged anymore. I'm good. I'm good in that respect. I'm just, like, tired because... Uh, I was up all night in the uh, haunted forest, getting that uh, that banger content. You know what I mean? It looked huge on our news. It was it was crazy. Um, there was like toppled buildings and rivers were like swaying back and forth. Never seen anything like that. But there was tsunami warnings in the south of Japan, Taiwan. Um, my friend Steve Ronan, who I'm going to see in a few days, he felt it in China across the water. Um, but yeah, all right. I am going to head off because I got to finish up all of this, get this video out for you guys. Again, thank you so much. Um, we will talk very, very soon. Love you. Bye-bye.